Heights. And just a few miles outside of Edison, New Jersey, is New York City, where you'll find this lady right here at Randall's Island Golf and Entertainment Center. Kelly Brook, our Golf Channel Academy Lead Coach of the Week. And Kelly, you had a recent look at Plainfield Country Club, and you know that shaping shots is going to be so important for success out there. So important. What would you say your students, when they first come to you that very first lesson, what is their understanding of shaping shots as it stands? Well, amazingly, no one really understands how to shape a shot. Most of my students come to me and I put a device on the face of my club. Mm -hmm. I have a, um, uh, a target line here. What most of my students believe when they're slicing the balls, they feel they're coming from the inside the target line and leaving the club face open, and that's why they think they're getting the slice. In reality, it's the reverse of that. So when I set up and I come up to the top of my swing, if I'm slicing the ball, normally I'm actually swinging outside. I'm cutting across the ball with an open club face. I used to be a pro at that move. <laughs> <laughs> All day, every day. And in fact, you hear about shaping shots with the pros. They always talk about visualizing that shot. But back to what we were talking about moments ago, when I try and visualize that shot, I usually end up slicing or hooking it. Well, I have a great teaching aid for that. Um, when I was a child, I, w I was sitting on the, the golf range watching our club pro, who was named Craig Bunker, who went mm -hmm. on to be the director of golf at John Jacobs. And uh, I was sitting behind him, and he'd say, he'd say to me, Kelly, tell me which way you want the ball to, uh, to bounce when it lands. So I'd scream uh, right, and he'd mm -hmm. hit a shot in the middle of his swing, and it would bounce the right. And I'd say, now left, and the ball would bounce to the left. I said, how are you doing that? Unbelievable. He said, there's a great visual I want you to think of. I want you to imagine that I'm holding a rope. If I want to slice the ball or I want it to spin so that when it lands it bounces to the right, mm -hmm. imagine bringing that club back and wrapping it around your neck and then wrapping it around your neck again. Okay. So again, you come back, your hands are high, that rope gets wrapped around your neck, and it wraps around your neck again. And what that does is it creates that outside in with an open club face spin, and the ball would fade a little bit, which I never recognized as a child, but I would just notice that it would bounce to the right. Okay. So I can go ahead and try that. So you visualize again that you are swinging out a rope. A rope. Something people could do at home in their living room. Exactly. Easily. Love it. So I would set up here. I would probably open my stance a little bit to help me okay. out with that. And then again, I would imagine that there's a rope tied to here. I'm going to go very high and very high. So that rope really wraps around my neck. And hopefully that will create a little bit of a, a left to right fade. Perfect. Which it did. I'll hit one more, try to exaggerate it a little more just to show you. Okay. We had to hold our country club where I had to actually turn the drive 90 degrees, which was interesting. So I'd really open my stance up. I'd really swing outside in, and I'd finish really high. And there you go. There's that left to right. Awesome. Okay, so what are the key takeaways that people should take when hitting a draw or hitting a fade? Okay, so... It's all, there are two factors. One is the direction that the club comes from, and the second is whether the club face is open, square, or closed. So again, if I put this magnet back on, this directional magnet, to hit a draw then. It's a great visual. Yep. What I'd like to do is I'd like to come from inside the target line, mm -hmm. so I'm hitting the inside corner of the ball, but then it's important that I actually either square up the club or I even slightly close it. So for a draw, the swing path is inside, to square to inside again. So we could go back hmm. to that rope. Back to the rope drill. Very right, cool. Back to the rope. I get so one of these. To get this uh, feeling, what I would do now is I'd wrap that rope around my body, wrap it around my body again. So a flatter swing plane? Flatter swing plane, because then it'll occur encourage more of an inside to inside swing path, and it makes the ball spin right to left. So again, wrap that rope around your body, wrap it around your body again. We'll go ahead and try that with my crafty 7-iron. I Beautiful. love my 7-iron. Yeah, show iron. us how it's done. So for a draw, I might slightly close my stance just to encourage a little more of a flat swing. But again, I'm going to visualize wrapping that rope around my body. I bring it back. It's a little flat. Hit the inside corner of the ball. Finish Very a little cool. lower, and there's my draw. Well executed. Thank now, you. Now, realistically, how long does it take a student to master this? I, you know, it takes a while to master it. It's much easier for a beginner to slice the ball, no oh, doubt yeah. about that. <laughs> it's a little, the, the, the pull or the, the hook or the draw is a little harder to master. I was just, if you're trying to hit a draw, the, the key is really to swing a little bit softer at the ball. Okay. Because if you're swinging hard, your, your rear shoulder is going to come over the top and you're going to naturally swing outside in. So you want to just slow down your swing a little bit if you're working on the draw. 
draw. Really focus on hitting the inside corner of the ball. Make sure your hands are very, very loose so you can square up that club. And then just go ahead and finish a little more around your body. Perfect. All right. Love your tips in here, Kelly. And she's not Thank done you. yet. You're back tomorrow. A little teaser for what we're going to cover. We're going to talk about my experience that I had when I was 13 or 14 with Ben Hogan. Really? Yes. Ooh, can't wait for that. You'll see that tomorrow on Morning Drive. But for more information, go to golfchannelacademy.com. Excuse me, to find a coach near you. Also, check the Golf Channel Academy Twitter and Facebook pages as all week long. You'll see tips from our pro just like Kelly here in Studio A.